Welcome back to Why in the Morning. And if it's Monday, it's matters pertaining youth and politics and also man conversations. So in studio right now, we're about to dive into a conversation that looks at... Uh, the question is, why is men's mental health not important? I know it's threw you off, uh, <laughs> off a little bit, but that's a conversation that we're having right now. Okay, so I would like to also find out if uh, when it comes to women and men, is there a difference when it comes to mental health? My name is Michelle Ashira. You can follow us across all our social media handles. That is at Y254 channel at Michelle Ashira. is where you can find me across all my socials. So in studio, most definitely, I am joined with two gentlemen who will take, you, who will take us through this particular conversation and also at, uh, bring it back home on a personal level if they have experienced any kind of mental difficulties mental illness in that form and the importance of mental health karibuni sana gentlemen thank you thank you <laughs> so i'll start with my immediate uh, very close on my right to so just introduce yourself and tell us what you do um my name is bravin yuri i'm a social media influencer political scientist um, but above all i'm a mental health advocate <laughs> Um, I do advocate for mental health and um, I speak about mental health and I mostly advocate for people speaking out um, and speaking up when it comes to mental health uh, because I believe that uh, when people share their stories uh, it helps to encourage even other people to come out and mm -hmm. be able to talk about um, their challenges too. Okay, yeah. right. The gentleman, and is that a jungle green? Yeah, did you, did you go for emerald it? green. Oh. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> for obvious, it may not be the yeah. first time seeing you, probably. Of course, even uh, our, our guest here. But tell us who you are, what you do. I'm Preston Jane One. Mm -hmm. I am a TV producer, director, and show host. I also am an advocate of teaching young men um, on how to become alpha males how to become ideal men mm -hmm. in the society yes so basically we are strong into empowering and teaching the boy child to be that person that will drive the society into a better place as we about society that brings another different conversation from an angle whereby <laughs> men are supposed to be strong men as you mentioned alpha mm. male and then there's the aspect of being strong and you cannot speak about alpha it. is uh, alpha is um has been given a very the conventional understanding uh -huh. of alpha is very wrong uh -huh. or let me say the face value People think alpha is about masculinity. Mm -hmm. Alpha is about a man who will walk in a room and if a person walks to them and says something that is not right, they beat them up. No, alpha is just being an ideal man. Understanding that a man is human, you have emotions, you can cry. Mm -hmm. A man can wear pink, mm -hmm. you get, a mm -hmm. man can cook. It's just being a man who in your interactions with every other relation you have, mm -hmm. you are that person who takes the lead. You are that person who makes everyone feel all right. Yes. Okay, fantastic. We'll get into that in a deeper level as we go on in the conversation. But starting us off, I would like to find out, Abravin, have you ever uh, experienced a uh, uh, mental health condition? Yeah, personally, I've, I've experienced um, depression as a person. Um, I've also experienced trauma. At the same time, I'm still handling anxiety to some extent uh, because um, these are some of the things that have actually pushed me towards uh, championing for mental health because I believe that there are people who are going also through this stuff, but most of the time they do not get uh, the platform to talk about them. Mm -hmm. So what I tend to, um, as a person, I've um, actually been through depression way back um, um, in campus. Uh, I had to undergo some personal um, stresses, etc., that I could not be able to find someone to talk to because at the time nobody was actually talking about mental health. So I had to struggle my way through it. And um, even when I was uh, still uh, handling my traumas at, at the time, mm -hmm. I think I did not have even the platform to actually talk about it. So that is one of the things that actually pushed me towards uh, talking about mental health because it made me uh, realize that there are people who actually need a platform where they can air their 
and what they're going through and their views. And that is what I intended to do and actually I created a platform for them to actually do that. So I've experienced it and I know uh, how, how much it can do to someone. And so that is why most of the time I'm passionate about mental health because um, it's something that I've been through and I know how it feels like to go through such a situation without getting that helping hand. Mm -hmm. So I decided to be one of the people that uh, provide that helping hand so that other people can also not lack it but have it so that they can be able to uh, have a better way to walk through it and be better people at the same time. Yeah. All right, and for this, uh, you'll be into this journey. When, uh, when you spoke, uh, one, of you, one of the things that she did <laughs> founded Mental Health Kenya. Yeah. And I'd like to find out, uh, for how long have you been doing this? I've been advocating for mental health from 2012. That is probably um, close to 10 years right now. Okay. Because when I started advocating for mental health, um, the conversation around mental health wasn't as vocal as it is right now. In fact, I think I'm more encouraged right now because there is a lot of uh, talk when it comes to mental health. But back then, it was it was I were not talking about it, and uh, nobody was even trying to push that conversation out there. Uh, people are silent about it and many are still suffering in silence. So I think right now it's much more better to mm -hmm. see that the conversation is um, more, more outspoken right now. Many people are talking about it and you can see even advocacy at different levels. So I think um, uh, there's been some good fruits mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the campaign and the awareness. So yeah, that is what I can say. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, Kristen, yes. on your end, uh, you you host uh, most of most of the conversation in your program. You have gentlemen on set to talk about many issues. But I'd like to find out on a personal level: Have you experienced a mental health condition? I have had depression myself. Uh, it was so bad that um, that time I didn't have anyone to confide in. So what I would do, I'd walk myself to church, mm -hmm. like spend most of the time in church um, not really praying but just finding somewhere peaceful yes so it was very serious sometime I would walk um, in the road not on the road <laughs> not on the on the on the pedestrian walk mm -hmm. I'd walk close to where the car is moving and uh, I can recall that times uh, traffic police have stopped me there like Hey, you young man, you think the road is yours. Because I don't understand myself. What I need is just distraction. And uh, my distraction, I think, was leading me to a bad thing uh, in a way. But um, What was your distraction at this particular moment? Just the, 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 the sound of the vehicles and all that. Or oh, sometime when I need now a quiet place, I would go to church. Yes, um, not that I was having suicidal thought, it never got to that point. But I think also I didn't understand myself um, and I was putting myself into danger. Um, I, would, I could hardly eat, no sleep, no eating, no nothing. Um, I had to cut myself off social media and all that. I just, I could not watch music. Mm -hmm. Yes, I could not watch music because sometimes music and some type of movies would remind me of what I'm fighting. So I would, I would, I shut down anything that would remind me of what I'm fighting. I could not go to town. I could not come to town. Coming to town, I'll get super depressed. So you like, isolated yourself. I tried to isolate myself, and um, I have a very good sister. At that time, she was outside of the country, so she told me, hey, yes, you know what, you have a problem. So what to do is, what if you come, I invite you over so that you just get a fresh environment so that you forget all this. Because I would literally not move anywhere, because anywhere I moved, mm -hmm. I was reminded of what I'm fighting, and that would put me down. I can't eat. I feel like... The world is coming to an end. My head is heavy. I'm like, okay. <sighs> what brought you to that particular state? Are you even allowed to know about it? Mm, a relationship uh, gone south. south. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When it starts to rain in heaven, uh, it gets it gets tough. So, 
and uh, it was not just a relationship uh, it's not just a breakup mm -hmm. it was a breakup that uh, comes with so many other things this uh, this person is um is trying to create some stuff in your life that you look at him like uh did, do we ever know each other so it was very tough i wouldn't want to delve much into that uh, mm -hmm. because it'd be like talking ill of the person because i know as a person i have my part that i played that mm -hmm. might have led into this but um it was very it was very it was very a very tough moment for me but anyway i would say that was immature me and right now i'm grown i know how to handle things yes so growth also helped in healing growing up okay all right um in a couple of i think last week we lost uh, one of the DJs, dj lithium uh, he's oh, yeah. working at uh, one media station he committed suicide allegedly through taking that poison and one of uh, when he wrote a note or a letter that saying that's one of the reason why he felt on that particular position or decision that he made um, is that family issues are involved and then uh, the last tweet that were made by him he was speaking about uh, visiting uh, for going for therapy he spoke about how expensive it is that 6500 even quoted the amount uh, per session Bravin, I'd like to understand, um, what would you describe as someone who is mentally healthy? And probably you can also take us through a couple of uh, mental health conditions that are most, most common. Um, to begin with, I'd like to say, uh, currently we don't say, we don't advocate for saying commit suicide. Okay. We say um, die by suicide. Da okay. Yeah. So, um, you know, when you talk about health in general, um, health is not just about the absence of a disease. It's, it's about um, uh, uh, the state of um, being complete in terms of your physical, mental, and social well-being. So when it comes to mental health, it's not just the absence of a mental illness. It's actually a state where you realize your own abilities, you are able to cope with the normal stresses, you are able to work um, productively, and you are able to contribute to the community. So if you are incapable of um, being able to handle the normal stresses, for example, financial um, stresses, ETC, then um, that is when you are probably in a not good state of mind. Um, when you're not in a situation where you can handle that. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to suicide, our World Health Organization says that uh, suicide happens uh, impulsively when there is uh, someone is incapable of actually handling their normal uh, stresses. So when it comes to suicide, uh, for example, I think it's um, World Health Organization has said it's the second lead, leading cause of death uh, for the people that are aged between, for example, 15 years to 29 years. And ev annually we lose like 800,000 people um, to, uh, to, to suicide. So um, I think when it comes to mental health in Kenya, uh, generally therapy, as you say, that it's expensive. That's, that's true. It's, it's actually expensive. Um, therapy is very expensive and I would actually wish that at least the government could step in and make it a bit more affordable. Um, I've seen some other organizations that are actually offering some of uh, these services pro bono. Like um, us, I also mm -hmm. partner with um, therapists who offer pro bono services. So what we do is when someone has a condition or wants to see a therapist, we can organize for one of those therapists who wants to offer pro bono services. But we also have those who charge per sessions because um, some of them also have more clients to actually deal with. But also at the same time, it's not just about the cost. We also lack um, the, 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 the the specialists themselves. We have very few uh, specialists, uh, when, uh, therapists, that mm -hmm. is. So I think um, there is a lot that we need to work on when it comes to mental health. And I think if um, NHIF could also incorporate that and make it more affordable so that even if someone wants to go for, uh, let's say, therapy, they can be able to get it at a better price uh, if they have NHIF. It can go uh, at least a very long way in terms of helping um, people get this access to the uh, counseling se um, sessions and services. It will really do a lot of good 
uh, for the people of Kenya because currently we have a huge spike in the number of cases. If you look at last year, um, the police report that was released, we lost uh, 483 uh, Kenyans to suicide in the month, um, three months to June. Like um, the three months to June, we lost uh, 483 Kenyans. And if you look at the numbers also, uh, you find that the youngest person on the report had uh, nine years. Uh, it was a nine-year-old, mm -hmm. and the oldest were like a 76-year-old. And in the previous year, we lost a six-year-old to suicide in Kilifi. Oh, yeah. uh, that was in 2020. Uh, okay. I think if you look even at, uh, at, the, at the age difference, or even those who are actually we are losing to suicide, the kids, the young, it means even the kids are affected. Yeah. So if you look at an explanation for the nine-year-old last year, it was because they were scolded for bad performance uh, in school, that is. So there's, there's a lot of stress that actually push people to suicide. It, mm. it, it, it's something that we need to talk about. It's how we solve these issues. Most of the time, I, I always uh, tell people that if we are able to find, you know, before someone decides to choose suicide, there's always a why. If you are able to uh, actually... Um, attend to the why, then we can be able to prevent the suicide. So if we are able to encourage people to speak about the why, then I think we'll be able to address some of these cases. If we don't uh, actually encourage people to talk about the why, mm -hmm. then it can be difficult to actually address these uh, cases of suicide because um, most of the time people keep quiet about mm -hmm. what they're going through, they especially should. men. Yes. And if you look at the statistics, uh, the most men are actually more prone to suicide than, than women. Because most of the time women talk about their issues, but men, we don't talk about them. Right. So uh, sometimes it just happens, uh, they take actions uh, because they have been going through something now they can't handle because they have not been talking about it. And there's a lot of stigma even when it comes to uh, therapy. Uh, men feel like, I've talked to some of my friends, I've mm -hmm. asked them if they can go for therapy. Uh, some of them tell me, no, that is a woman thing, it's not a man thing. So, you know, there is a lot of stigma even when it comes to therapy. When someone says they want to go for therapy and there's a man, uh, most of the time people look at you like you are, are okay? not, you're not a normal man. You, there's something you're wrong weak. with you. Yeah, you're weak. Yeah. That, that is the problem that we have right mm -hmm. now. And I think um, there's a lot of um, uh, bad or let's say misinformation in terms of therapy out here. So I think uh, we have a lot to do even in terms of encouraging men to go for therapy because at the end of the day, um, therapy is good for you. Uh, it's good for you as a person even before you get into any relationship because I understand relationships also uh, cause uh, some of the mental health problems that we might experience. So before you even go for any into an, any relationship, I would encourage you first go to therapy with your partner because there are a lot of things people don't talk about, but therapy will enable you to actually bring them out and that is how you'll be able to tackle some of these things even before you get into that relationship uh -huh. because sometime you might end up into it and you were not prepared we mentally not, and yes. you didn't even know. Very and true. you know, sometimes even people can be depressed, but they don't know they're getting into a relationship and they're depressed, but they don't know they're even depressed. And that's why we look at a couple of uh, signs that we can also look out for if yeah. someone is actually yeah. going through a mental health condition. Please, I'd like to find out, in your case whereby you are depressed and you're just like, mm. n now your sister has actually identified that you're not okay. At what particular point did you open up or what triggered you to open up? And uh, before, you, I wanted to ask another but let's answer that first. <laughs> I think, I think uh, my sister and I share a very close relationship. So um, we'll confide in into, into each other mm -hmm. and speak freely about what's happening. And also, she wouldn't have gotten to know about this, but she had to know it because whoever I was involved with now was speaking to everyone in my circle. Mm. Uh, and that's why I usually tell people young people when you get into a relationship before you think of marrying someone don't just introduce them to anyone because mm -hmm. um they might want to turn your life upside down once they're done with you so my sister learns of stuff um from this this lady from yeah so she's told and because we share a close relationship she asks me but the way we are speaking, she understands me very much. Um, she, feel like, she feels like I'm not well. So we keep on speaking for a while, keep on speaking for a while. 
And then she keeps on getting so many stories from this person. And she's like, no, this must be taking toll on my brother. So in the process of pushing to know, pressing the right buttons to know how I'm doing, just tell her, I'm not that good. Yes. Yeah, so. But speaking to my friends, I wouldn't speak, uh, I wasn't speaking to my friends. Why, um, why wouldn't she speak to your friends? No, I'm, I'm who? My, like the boys. I wouldn't speak to my friends. Um, f first of all, I usually t say we have friends. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is your friend. Mm -hmm. Like personally, I would count my friends. They're not even like five. Um, others are just pals. Others are just acquaintances. Others are just associates. Others are just mates. So this thing of saying BFF, calling everyone BFF, these are, this person you're calling BFF, you tell them what you're suffering from. They will not say. They just laugh. And because of this thing of... Um, misunderstanding that, that, that alpha male thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you speak to your friend and they tell you, yeah, you dude, we told you uh, this was a no-go zone. You, you didn't, man. There are so many girls out here. Mm -hmm. You can find another. Move you, on. You don't need to go to such like a person. Yeah. Or you're fighting a bad breakup, uh, which is making you depressed, and a person is introducing you to another girl. Mm -hmm. So you're just going, you want to go with baggage into a new relationship where you're going to make the other person depressed. So this is like um, passing depression to another person. So sometimes some things you don't confide to your friends, especially when your friends are not that wise or are not that mature. And are not informed. Yes, and yeah. that's why I usually tell young people, don't just have friends or call a person who tells you every Friday we are going to a club, that is your friend. Mm -hmm. The friend that you should confide in is the person who tells you, hey, uh, there's this opportunity, let's go for it. Um, you're doing wrong here, let's do this. So my friends who are that type, oh, let's go for a road trip. Do you really confide in a person like that when you have stress? Mm -hmm. You have stress and they are, what the suggestion they're giving you is, yeah, we have a party, girls are coming. Do you confide into a person like that? Absolutely no, not. Yes. So um, I would like to find out now, how did you move on from that? Because you mentioned, like, I moved on from that when mm. you were winding up earlier on in that particular story. Mm. I would like to find out uh, your coping, your, uh, how you developed, like, life, like your life coping skills just to outgrow that particular moment. And did you seek any therapy? Was there a form of that level of uh, help? Growing uh, 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 up, I was working with some, uh, uh, with some people's charity, charitable people, but most thank thankfully they were doctors. So big doctors, so they would hook, up, hook me up to shrinks. So where you go and uh, you speak about them and then they try, advise you, therapist that is. They speak to you. So I had some professional help. Mm -hmm. But what helped me, what I felt like helped me most, because sometimes help is within, is within you, not outside. What helped me is switch my numbers dumped the old numbers, deleted all my Instagram, my Facebook. I quit social media. I quit social media and changed, totally changed all my friends. Totally. Mm -hmm. Like I have a new set of friends, I have a new set of pals, I have a new set of people I work with. That time everyone I used to do anything with, I cut them off. Because they were not helping me in any way. And then also leaving the country, helped me, made me forget everything. So that is how I got out of it. All right, Raven, uh, I believe you've interacted with so many people who have gone through or still going through mental health conditions. And I'd like to find out what are uh, some of the early warning signs that you can actually watch out for, uh, even for people who are around you as family and friends. And then you can really identify that, ah, by the way, Michelle is not OK. By the way, Kristen is not OK. So what are a couple of those signs that we can look out for and just really know that someone is not doing well? Uh, you know, the thing about mental health, um, we have people who uh, respond different. For example, when it comes to depression, when someone is depressed, for example, 
um, there are those who will actually show signs that you'll be able to see, but there are others who will just smile around and not uh, show any signs. For ah, example, everything is okay. Yeah, you'll you, you'll see someone who is uh, probably just excited. They are partying. You know, the life sometimes of the party. Yeah. Yeah. sometimes for for other people, a sign of being depressed is uh, being hyperactive, mm -hmm. because that is act that will actually probably show you that something is not right, because um, there is a change in behavior. Uh, there are those who will withdraw. Some will not talk much. They'll not. Uh, f if they were updating, for example, their WhatsApp statuses, their social media statuses, they don't do it. Um, or the the form or the way in which they try to communicate or put out the the messages that they put out, uh, it changes. For example, if they used to be jovial and talk about specific kind of topics, they switch to a different kind of topic with a different kind of tone. So you can be able to actually see. Those are, for example, people who elicit or show the signs you can be able to see. Uh, there are those who will just lock themselves in a room, not talk, stay in bed, for example, take an off just uh, to, to pro for example, just deal with what they're going through in silence. Then there are those who will, for example, go in a party, drink, mm. try to um, um, uh, escape from what they're feeling, for example. Uh, some will do alcohol, for example, you'll see their um, uh, doing, for example, abusing drugs, you know, the some of the behaviors, sometimes you just need to be careful and keen to actually notice some of the behaviors because some you'll be able to see them at, 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 like at a glance, but the others you'll not be able to see. So at the end of the day, it requires you to actually just be there for them if they need that help. Just tell them if they want to talk, it's okay, they can talk to you if they want to talk about something. Because sometimes just being there for someone is probably what they need. Sometimes people just want someone who can actually listen, not give just advice, just listen to them. Because most of the time a listening ear is better. Mm -hmm. um, that's why I always tell people it's, it's why you have two ears. You have to listen more than just talk, you mm -hmm. have one mouth. So just listen to what someone has to say. Uh, it's more important because if you are able to be there for them, that is more than what they need because it's one step when they start talking about their issues. It's one step towards recovery because recovery is a journey. It's not just an event that happens one day. So if they talk about their problems, then it can be easier for you even to see how probably you can help them, probably by referring them to a specialist or someone who can give them a professional guidance and help and support. That and, and Michelle, I, I just being there for a person, especially for young people, and I tell young people, like with my boys, um, I have weird conversations with the, with the, with the, my, my male friends. Uh, being there for a person, because he said there are some people who don't show signs of uh, depression. Mm -hmm. um, how can you help such like a person? I feel like when you're speaking to a person, there are people who text you, hey. Mm. And then you, 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 you text, hello. And then they, they, they say, I hope you're good. Mm -hmm. I usually tell people, always, with the people you close to your relations, your relations, ask them, how are you doing? Have you had one, two, three things? That is how you, you realize that a person is not good. If you ask a person, how are you good? How are you feeling? They'll tell you, I'm well. But if you just tell them, I hope you're good, you've, mm -hmm. you've already locked them out. Mm -hmm. They can't tell you how they're feeling because you said you hope. I even read somewhere that yes. when someone asks you, how are you doing? They really don't really mean it in most yeah. cases. They just want to kickstart a conversation. Yeah, they want to kickstart a conversation. So when I ask you, how are you doing? You tell me, I'm this way. I mm -hmm. ask you, how is your health? Mm -hmm. How did you wake up today? Have you eaten? Have you done? So from that, you'll pick. Because you know a person, if you know a person very well, and the person tells you, I've not eaten, you ask them, why have you not eaten? And I ask my boys. The problem with men is they feel if you start asking a man such like questions, and then, then you border some some side of gender fluidity, fluidity. I don't want to go there. Uh, but these stereotypes need to be broken. We need to take care of each other. And this is how you know that. There's a time I was speaking to a person, interestingly, just a stranger. Uh, they were texting me, uh, commenting on my show. I don't know how they found my number. And then we are speaking to them, and I'm like, how, how are you doing? Uh, how is your day? How is school? How mm -hmm. is it going? Mm -hmm. Through that conversation, me asking those small questions, they open up. They told me they're depressed. So we had to meet up. I'm like, I just... And then we had a conversation. And later they said, ah, I'm feeling good. But I told them, if this doesn't help you, mm -hmm. seek a therapist. Sometime for us men, let's just open up to each other. 
let's care for each other. Let's ask how a person is doing. Don't feel like you are an alpha male, the, the typical alpha male, that you don't need to cry. You don't need to open up to a person. You don't need to vent. That venting is for women and men. We are all we're supposed to be brave. We are. We are supposed teen. to be brave and just you know. Sure, everything is okay. When <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. Not. Sure, everything is okay when it's not because we are meant to be strong. No, men cry. It's okay not to be okay for a man. It's mm -hmm. okay to cry. Just be vulnerable because that is how you get help. Mm -hmm. And how do, you, uh, how do you deal with the stigma or rather just get rid of the whole stigma about, you know, as the way you put it, an alpha man is a man who is, according to society, someone who is strong, someone who is brave, someone who has it all figured out. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to cry and even open up to your, to your friends or anything like that. So how do you kill the, the stigma around it? How do you kill the narrative that that is the alpha man or that is the man? Uh, at the end of the day, you're just you. You're just you. You were born alone. You go to your house alone. When you have your problems, you face them alone. When you die, you die alone. Mm -hmm. You don't die two people. Mm -hmm. So if you want to live um, because you want to impress people or you want to give this impression that you're a strong man, then that is very wrong. Just be you. Be okay. Just have a veil. Have a veil uh, around yourself uh, that separates you from the people who are trying to stereotype everything about men, mm -hmm. the people who, are, who, who want to make you feel that you are less of a man because you are venting, because you are, um, you are uh, expressing how, how you feel. How you feel. Yes. Just be you. Do you. Your mental health your health wholly, ho holistically is about you. So don't listen to what people are saying about you. Only listen to them when they're giving you good advice. This other time they're speaking to you, just hear. You know there's a difference between listening and hearing. Mm -hmm. Just hear them. Uh, you say a man should not cry, okay, I hear you. But you're not in my shoe. Don't yeah, know you're not in my shoe. So I won't listen to that. Mm -hmm. I'll go cry. Mm -hmm. I'll find someone to vent to. Even if it is a lady, mm -hmm. go vent with that Woman. lady. Okay. If, even if it is a young, a, young ma a young person who is wiser than you, go vent to them. Go vent to your mother. And young people, establish good relationships with your mothers, with your sisters, with your brothers. Well, these are the people who will listen to you. Your friends, those, ones, those that you go to the club with daily, will not let you vent. They will want to tell you, hey, grab some thoughts. <laughs> and down the let's other. go out and uh, do yeah, this the and depression. that just yeah because they don't, don't really understand and they're not informed on what you're going through True that True. all right so like, just last week i believe on wednesday i believe uh, if you guys are familiar with hollywood um so sure you know regina king so mm -hmm. he, her son her only son known as uh, ian alexander uh died by suicide uh so and uh, he was at the age of 26. So, Bravin, I'd like to understand when it comes to mental health and just different conditions per se, what are the factors contributing to this, you know, different conditions? We have anxiety, we have depression, there's so many of them. So what are the couple of factors that actually contribute to mental health problems? Um, the, the, mainly we have socioeconomic problems, we have biological causes and we also have environmental causes. These are things that actually contribute to um, people having different kinds of um, mental health related problems. Um, because there are people who are actually born with some mental health uh, illnesses, for example. And uh, how... They're just inborn. Yeah, there are people who are actually born. For example, if, if let's say, uh, someone has inherited okay. uh, a kind of mental health illness. Or from uh, the history of the family. Yes, okay. uh, that is, they are born with it. Mm -hmm. It's biological. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are those, for example, uh, you get, for example, trauma because of something that happened uh, to you. For example, if, for example, um, you faced a situation or a scenario that um, weighed heavily in terms of um, t uh, in terms of your, t to your mental health. Mm -hmm. So you, you end up developing, let's say, some withdrawal from such kind of event. For example, as a person, me personally, I had an accident that is, mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, seriously mugged. 
um, and that is what gave me a serious trauma mm -hmm. and that is why I switched from being an extrovert into an introvert mm -hmm. um, so it, it kind of changes you in one way or the other so you can get all these in terms of different causes and there are those who for example get depressed because of ed economical uh, reasons you know you mm -hmm. are incapable of uh, servicing your bills etc you get depressed and uh, then that is how you develop it as a mental um, health uh, problem so there are different things that can actually cause you to have a different mental uh, illness um, but mostly when it comes to suicide for example mm -hmm. uh, depression is the highest lead cause of suicide when it comes to in Kenya that is if, if I'm talking I'm going to talk about a Kenyan setup um, mm -hmm. depression is one of is, of, is the leading cause mm -hmm. and depression has been co has, has, has the, the causes of depression are several in Kenya mm -hmm. but the leading one mostly is usually um, financial um, uh, for example strains that is uh, but at the same time there are those people who have the money but still end up getting depressed because mm -hmm. of different causes again so there's so many factors that actually um, make someone to get any mental illness but it all narrows down to how they are able to express what they're going through uh, when it comes to suicide most of the time i tell people you would never understand the reason as to why one chooses suicide unless mm -hmm. you're in that shoe mm -hmm. unless you're able to wear that shoe then you are unable to understand it's the same thing i always tell people and give them this analogy mm -hmm. um when it comes to a house that is on fire and you're in the fourth floor fifth floor mm -hmm. um and then someone has two options, either to stay in the house and get consumed by that fire or jump from the fourth floor, not sure that they'll survive the jump. Mm. So that is a scenario in which someone is already they are burning with issues. Mm -hmm. So for them, so they, they are looking place. for a way out of this issue. So they are mm. unable to cope with these issues that they are actually facing. So that is the fire that is consuming them that okay. probably they have not been given the platform to talk about them. That is the why I was talking about initially. Mm -hmm. If you're able to make these people to talk about the why, then it will be easier for us to actually extinguish this fire that is consuming them. So we can be able to give them support, the help, the therapy, for example, that they need, so that they can be able to come out of that um, uh, situation that they're in say, a bit more safely than jumping out oh, of that. Okay. Of that uh, I yeah. think from that perspective, we get it. And Christian, I'd like to find out uh, uh, what role can women play to help men in their lives to become more, you know, they can communicate more, they can talk about these issues, just the role that a woman can play in their lives. It could be your mother, it could be your sister. In your case, that was the, uh, that was the case. It could be uh, a, your partner, per se. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, female relations are very, are very vital in, in, in molding a man. Mm -hmm. um, female relations are very vital in making a man successful. Just like they say, behind a very successful man, there is a, there is a, there is a woman. Mm -hmm. um, this is very interesting. Women do listen. Mm -hmm. And they pay great attention. So if you ever have female friends who are wise, who you don't look at them with a lens of, I've seen a fly, gorgeous woman, and I want to get into their pants, but look at them at, I've seen a woman who is beautiful in here and outside. Mm -hmm. That would help. Uh, I realize that women would pay more attention when you vent mm -hmm. than men would. Mm -hmm. So men i'll just advise them try always speak to these women don't don't feel like you'll feel you'll feel weaker when you vent out or when you tell them your problems because these women aside from just listening to them listening to you they'll even recommend someone mm -hmm. women have have solutions and i really carry women into high regards they have a solution a solution to everything if you have a girlfriend normalize having conversations outside having fun with your girlfriend mm -hmm. sometimes just go to the kitchen cook and then speak about something what they'll tell you will really build you mm -hmm. um also also what i would say is men should 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 like Remove those symptoms from this box whereby they feel they are a superior race. Mm. I'm talking about now machismo. Mm -hmm. You are of a 
macho men. You are as over superior race. You you are over superior uh, gender, and and you cannot confide in women, mm -hmm. and that you ha only have to speak to men. Mm -hmm. Listen, in most cases, men have misled men, okay. but in all cases where men have been have come out on the top, it's women who have advised them. All right. As we wind up, I'd like uh, you guys to give us your social media handles. I, w I hope that, or I wished uh, we could have more time because this is a conversation that we can go on and go on uh, just to bring out, uh, also send awareness out there for also our viewers and uh, anyone who wants to keep the conversation going, how can they reach out to you, Bravin? Um, my social media handle is on Twitter. It is uh, Bravinuri. Um, on Instagram, it is at It's Bravinuri. On Facebook, it's Bravinuri. That's my page. Um, so that is where you can reach me. All right. Media. Thank you very much, Bravin. Jason? Across all platforms, that is Twitter and Instagram. I'm Preston Jane One. All right. Well, I'm Preston Jane, Jane One. Where the Jane One? Uh, Jane <laughs> One is after my mother. Oh, that's Preston. how I respect women, and that's why I told you always seek advice from women. There you have it. <laughs> Thank you very much, gentlemen, for creating time to be with us talking about uh, issues of uh, mental health concerning uh, precisely men in this case. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for the invite. All right, there, guys, uh, we were talking about why is men's mental health important, not important. That was the question of the day. My name is Michelle Ashira. Thank you for keeping uh, uh, this conversation with us on social media. At Y254 channel, at Michelle Ashira is where you can find me across all my social careers. We'll be coming up with youth and politics, so make sure you stay tuned. We have so much coming your way right here on Y in the morning.